U.S. needs to learn from Ukraine in using unmanned systems, Senator Tom Brewer. The U.S. Army has a lot to learn from the Ukrainian military in using unmanned systems, given the experience that the Ukrainian armed forces have gained since the beginning of Russia's full-scale invasion. Nebraska State Senator Tom Brewer, a retired U.S. Army colonel with extensive combat experience, said this in an interview with Ukrinform. The problem is that the Americans don't understand drone warfare. We need to learn it from you. We need advisors over here that are hearing, seeing things and making notes so that we don't have Americans die because they don't know what to do, Brewer said. According to the politician, technology has changed the battlefield. It's done so even in the last six months. A year ago, we were pretty proud of the fact we're giving them M1 tanks and things like that. But now we realize that an M1 tank really isn't worth a whole lot on the battlefield because of the drones. And if you take the cost of an M1 tank and you give that to Ukrainian drones, that would be much more valuable. Brewer said he expressed interest in Ukraine's Army of Drones project and emphasized the importance of the effective use of unmanned systems on the battlefield in Ukraine and for hitting targets on the territory of the aggressor country. At the same time, the Nebraska senator thinks that any warnings against attacks on Russian oil refineries are groundless. I find it disturbing that the US is upset about the fuel depots or the refineries that Ukraine is hitting. If you can find it, destroy it, do it. You may hear rumblings that the United States isn't happy with that because it could affect oil prices ahead of the elections. But this is about winning a war. It should not be about fuel prices. If the whole world has to pay more, in the end, the war is successful and Russia is defeated. Then I think that's the price the world pays. But we shouldn't restrict or put handcuffs on Ukraine. They have the ability, knowledge and understanding how to win the war. They just don't have the tools. Brewer said, all of Ukraine's partners should follow the example of the United Kingdom that allowed the use of its weapons provided in military aid packages against any legitimate military targets on Russian territory, the politician said. Because that's the bottom line. You win the war and you do whatever you got to do. Russia is not hesitating to shoot anywhere they want in Ukraine. Why should Ukraine hesitate, he said. German lawmakers want to shoot down Russian missiles over Ukraine. German lawmakers from both the ruling coalition and the opposition support the idea of NATO imposing a no-fly zone over western Ukraine amid the conflict with Russia, Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung has reported. For its article, the paper asked members of parliament about the proposal, earlier floated by the defense minister's chief of staff, Nico Lang, who suggested that Russian missiles and drones targeting Ukrainian energy infrastructure and military installations could be shot down from the territory of neighboring Poland and Romania. According to Lang, this would lead to the creation of a 70-kilometer wide safe zone on the border between the EU and Ukraine, while also allowing Kiev to redeploy its own air defense systems, which are in short supply from the west of the country to the front line. Defending the airspace over Ukraine from Poland and Romania should not be ruled out in the long term. Anton Hofrita, a member of parliament for the Green Party, which is part of the German coalition, told Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung. However, such a move is not up for debate at the moment, as the current priority for the West is to supply Ukraine with significantly more arms and ammunition, he stressed. Markus Faber from the Free Democratic Party, also in the ruling coalition, agreed that the airspace over the Ukrainian border regions could be protected by air defenses on NATO territory. According to Faber, this would only be possible if the West can secure enough ammunition for the air defense systems. A lawmaker for the opposition Christian Democratic Union, Roderich Kaiswetter, also said Kiev's Western backers could shoot down Russian drones over Western Ukraine. This would relieve the Ukrainian air defense and enable it to protect the front, he explained. Kaiswetter recalled how the US UK and France assisted Israel with countering a large-scale bombardment by Iran in April, saying it showed that countries can provide such help to their allies without actually becoming a party to the conflict. North Korea supplies old multiple launch rocket systems to Russia. The intelligence agency of South Korea announced its suspicions that North Korean weapons manufactured in the 1970s were supplied to Russia for the war against Ukraine. Yonhap reports this. 
The National Intelligence Service made the statement in response to a recent report by local media that 122 mm artillery shells manufactured in North Korea in the 1970s were among the weapons used by Russia in the war against Ukraine. The intelligence agency of South Korea is analyzing the relevant situation in detail and also continues to monitor the general military cooperation between North Korea and Russia. South Korea's intelligence service analyzed photos published by a Ukrainian photographer last year and discovered Korean letters including the number 122 that were inscribed on the missile shells. Experts said these are most likely 120 mm projectiles for rocket launcher systems. South Korea's Defense Minister Shin Won-sik estimated that North Korea sent about 6,700 containers to Russia after the two countries' summit in September, enough to house about about 3,152mm artillery shells or 500,122mm artillery shells. The US has counted the number of ammunition that North Korea has provided to Russia. North Korea and Russia violate all international agreements. The deputy head of the US mission to the OSCE, Tracy Newell, stated this at the meeting of the OSCE Permanent Council on Thursday in Vienna. Since the end of last year, North Korea has delivered almost 11,000 containers of ammunition to Russia, as well as ballistic missile launchers and several dozen ballistic missiles. Russia has repeatedly used these weapons to attack Ukrainian infrastructure. The American diplomat said Pyongyang is not doing this for free. North Korea is interested in fighter jets, surface-to-air missiles, armored vehicles, ballistic missile equipment or materials, and other advanced technologies. It is clear that Russia and North Korea are violating UN Security Council resolutions by participating in these deliveries. The diplomat added that Russia and Iran are also developing their ties in other areas, primarily in oil and gas and banking, and such cooperation weakens our collective efforts aimed at ending Russia's war against Ukraine.